here we go again, guys. Final Fantasy XIII 2 seeks to return players to the land of Foul Sea in automatic combat, but does Take 2 on the formula fix all the original's problems? Insert time related punny intro here. Looks like the future starts now. Taking place three years after the original game, you step into the role of Sarah, who isn't coping too well with the absence of lightning. But that's when she's given the power to travel through time by her missing sibling, and along with Noel, a warrior from another era who has a convenient case of historical amnesia, she sets out to cross the decades in search of her sister. Just when you thought the narrative of Final Fantasy XIII couldn't get any more convoluted, they introduce the ideas of time travel and alternate timelines. And that's what you think at first, at least. But then you actually play it and you realize the narrative is much easier to follow this time around. Rather than scanning every page of your logbook so the next plot twist won't make your brain set on fire, everything feels self-contained and simple in 13.2, moving at a brisk, acceptable pace and slowly but surely bringing you into the world. Whether it dodges the cheese generally associated with JRPGs, though, is still up for debate. Look, my pendant has a brand new chain. Mm. <laughs> oh, okay. Combat is virtually identical to the original. For the uninitiated, 13.2 uses the Paradigm System, where every character on your team is assigned a job such as melee, magical DPS, or healing, and executes commands associated with that role when their respective timer fills up. You can create up to six sets of paradigms to freely switch between in battle, a process that has been made smoother from the original. The catch here is that 13.2 offers an auto-battle command, which intelligently chooses the best abilities for the given situation and target. This is both the game's greatest asset and its biggest curse, depending on which side of the spectrum you fall on. On one hand, you could argue that this makes encounters far too autonomous. Indeed, we ourselves have gotten through several encounters just by pressing the X button, and it's happened in more than one area. But on the other hand, the system's design offers for much faster gameplay than its contemporaries. It allows the player to control the general flow of combat, rather than making them worry about every little detail, eliminating a lot of the downtime typically associated with the genre. That said, no AI is perfect and there will inevitably be occasions where you'll wish you would put in the commands yourself. But the point is, 99 times out of 100, it works. Considering fighting is what you'll be doing the most of in this game, make sure this is your number one concern when deciding whether to make a purchase or not. The beauty's all mine, but the products can be yours, but only if you show me the money. How you enter combat is also a break from the norm. In a fusion of random encounters and making enemies have tangible forms on the field, foes will appear sporadically around you at certain points. If you want to avoid them, just keep on running. But if you do wish to fight, landing an attack on one in the field will start the encounter with bonuses for your party. Combat isn't all there is to see, either. There's a casino, chocobos, and mini-games to pad out the experience. The temporal puzzles, which are required to beat the game, don't feel quite as welcome as they should, but at least Square tried to break things up a bit, which is more than can be said for a lot of JRPG developers. The time travel mechanic also plays an integral role of the experience, offering plenty of places and eras to explore. For those who hated the general linearity of 13, behold your salvation. Every area has plenty of nooks, crannies, and paths to explore, as well as a few side quests to undertake if you're so inclined. The big draw here is the power to issue a do-over at any time and try things another way. By taking advantage of all the options available to you, you'll unlock new paths, alternate versions of the same area, and possibly even snag one of the coveted paradox endings. Two choices. We try that new device and hope it controls Atlas. Or do it the old-fashioned way and fight him head-on. 13.2 even sports a monster taming mechanic that sets creatures with predetermined roles as the third wheel in your party. There's simply far more to sink your teeth into this time around, and the substance available should more than satisfy the needs of hardcore role-playing fans. I know it's a little dark in here, but I paid my electric bill, I swear! In terms of presentation, Final Fantasy has a stylized anime look that's become synonymous with the franchise by now, and 13.2 takes full advantage. It's just a shame that the frame rate tends to buckle under the weight of the graphical ambition, no matter which version you're playing. There's also nothing about the overall design of the game that truly stands out from anything you've ever seen before. It lacks some of the defining magic that the series is famous for, but be aware that by anyone else's standards, that still makes 13.2 a breathtaking looking game. 
and even the voice actors sound grounded and believable, despite the occasional awkward line. <laughs> you want to try them on? They might look better on you. <laughs> I don't think so. Wouldn't want to show you up or anything. At the end of the day, what really saves 13-2 is that it simply feels more like an actual Final Fantasy game than its predecessor, and not just because it has a Moogle in it. With a world that stocks itself full of playable substance instead of the narrative kind, subtle improvements to the battle system, and an all-around more focused tale, this feels like the game 13 should have been. If that was indeed the developer's intent, we here at Team Pizza say, Mission accomplished. Have a fantabulous day!